Hello there YouTube, thank you for tuning in. Today I wanted to talk to you about how to start an Appium server uh, from a command line. So at the end of this video you should know how to start Appium server on a terminal. Okay, and for this we will need a lot of different components to get this working if you don't already have them installed on your system. If you do then it should be a lot quicker, but if you don't then we'll need to get the .NET framework, we will need to get Node.js, we will need to get Appium itself, and then Android SDK, and we will need Java. Uh, to actually run uh, the Appium server, you don't need Android SDK, or Java for that matter. But because I'm going to be doing some other videos later on how to uh, do automation on Android. Um, that's why I'm going to show you how to install those as well, <clears throat> because those are important components in later videos. So let's get started. So we're going to need to install uh, Microsoft.NET Framework first. Okay, let's go ahead and get this started because it does install for quite some time, probably the longest one. Okay, and we're just going to install it with its default settings. So we'll just leave it here uh, because it does take some time. And we're going to go ahead and create some directories on our C drive for some of the other installations that we're going to be doing. So let's create a directory for Node.js, just call it Node. Now let's create a directory for uh, Android SDK, and I do recommend that uh, when you create the directory for Android SDK that it is one word. Uh, if it's two words, it may bring some issues later down the road. <clears throat> so just one word is recommended. So now that we did that, let's go ahead and install Node, or oh, first download Node with a Windows installer. Okay, and don't worry guys, all these links are going to be in the description, so make sure to check it out for references. So let's install Node now. And Node is actually probably the easiest one to install because it's it's literally just accepting all the uh, defaults and just changing the in installation path. So let's see, accept, yes, I accept license agreement. So this is where we're going to change the installation path of Node. Okay, and it's going to be in a C drive, Node. I uh, can just remove that. Okay, accept and accept, install. Okay. So that should do it. Let's go ahead and uh, install Java next. And yes, I accept license agreement and I'm gonna download the 64-bit version. See what's happening here with our .NET. Okay, it looks like .NET is finished installing, so that's good. So that's two down, three to go. Actually, might as well install the SDK. Okay, and .NET is asking me if I want to restart my computer right now, and I'm going to say no now. I'm going to do it later. And just get to the SDK tools real quick. So we're going to use the SDK installer, okay, as it's recommended, and it's pretty easy. So, okay, it looks like Java finish downloading. Let's install Java real quick. OK, 
okay for Java just accept the defaults it should be a pretty quick install Come on. All right. So just accept the default. While it's installing, we can actually go ahead and set the path because I'm pretty sure we have the directory for Java available in the program files already. Yep, there we go. So we need the JDK directory. So go to JDK and then copy this path. And then we're going to go to our environment variables. And add new Java home. And just paste this in here. Then we're going to go to our path, and we're going to add that to our path. Make sure there's no spaces. Oops, not Android. Java home, and then the Java executable is in the bin folder. So we're going to do slash bin and semicolon at the end, and then we're going to press OK. OK, OK. We can close it for now. So let's just verify. Let's see. So Java finished installing. That's good. Let's just verify that Java is working. We're going to do Windows R and then CMD to open a prompt here. We're going to type Java. And we see a bunch of gibberish here. OK. Uh, so if you see this, it means Java is working. So OK, you can close this. Uh, let's see what else we need to do. We need to, now we can install the Android SDK. Now that Java is installed, Android SDK is going to install fine. So let's see, open that next. Oh, actually, let's see, what is this? OK, that's the location of Java. Yes, install just for me, yes. And then here, I'm going to change the directory to install into Android SDK directory. OK, I'm going to click OK, install. So that's going to install the Android SDK and all of the tools. And now we need to add Android SDK to our path as well. So I'm going to go uh, to my C drive. I'm going to go to my Android SDK. I'm, I'm going to copy this path. And I'm going to go to Properties, Advanced System Settings, Environment Variables. And I'm going to add new environment variable. I'm going to call it Android Home. OK, and I'm going to paste this in here. OK, and then I'm going to go to our path variable. And I'm going to add Android Home. OK, and then I'm also going to add, actually, I'm going to copy this. Not only Android Home, but we're also going to add Android Home slash tools. And we're also going to add Android Home slash platform tools. And we're also going to add Android Home slash build tools. Okay. So we're going to click. OK, and OK, and OK, close this. So let's see what's happening with our installation. Looks like it's completed, so we can close it. A <clears throat> um, couple of words about the SDK manager. Now that you have installed Android SDK, this is basically the bare minimum that came with the SDK. So you have your tools, the platforms. Uh, you have nothing in the platforms, though. So for us to be able to work with Appium, we will need to have uh, platforms here. So to do that, you would want to 
uh, start the SDK manager. And you can also start the SDK manager from here. You have the SDK manager right there. And it would open uh, this right here. So <clears throat> ideally, you guys want to have all of the tools installed. Okay. Um, so I would recommend you guys to install all of this. And then, depending on the device uh, that you're going to be using to do automation with Appium, I would recommend to install the API for that device. Uh, we're not going to be doing it right now because it takes forever to do. Um, and probably now that I covered it in this video, I'm not going to cover it again. So maybe I'll show it later if needed. But it's just pretty, pretty, pretty self-explanatory. <clears throat> so if you have, for example, Android 5, uh, you would install this API, API 21. And to do it, you just select it, you say install, and then it will ask you to confirm or accept licenses for whatever packages. Uh, you can just click accept, and then you can just click install, and it will install all of the dependencies, all of the packages, everything you need um, for SDK to work properly. But right now, we're not going to do it. So, But it just FYI. <clears throat> so let's see what else we need. So we installed everything but Appium. So let's install Appium. So we're going to download it. It's going to go into our downloads folder. Okay. Ooh, it's taking forever. All right. I'm just going to pause the video and come back once that's done. All right, the installation is about done. Oh, it's done. All right, let's unzip this thing. And I'm just going to copy this and then go back to downloads. And I'm just going to paste it. OK, here we have our installer. So we're going to run Appium installer. <clears throat> English is fine for me. So next, next. And then I'm going to install Appium into the C drive as well. Okay, so we'll do this. Okay. So that's good for me. And yeah, sure, we can create desktop icon. I'm actually going to use that once. So this may actually take a while as well. Um, so we're going to wait for it. I can't do anything right now to show you anything else while this is downloading. So I'm just going to pause the video and come back later. Uh, while this is installing, one thing I wanted to say is make sure to install Node first uh, before you start installing um, Appium. Uh, because you do need Node installed uh, for that to work. Or at least I think so. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I think I think I'm right. <clears throat> but okay, let's uh, launch our Appium uh, to see if it works at all right now. So let's just click this play button to start the server and see if it starts. So let's see, Appium REST HTTP interface listener started. Okay, so it started, so everything we installed, installed correctly, looks like. Uh, just to <clears throat> double check that we did everything correctly, uh, now we're going to have to start this through a terminal and see if it works via terminal. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to our C drive, Appium, and then we're going to go to node modules and we're going to go to bin. I'm going to copy this path and I'm going to add this path again to our environment variables. Uh, let's do Appium. Oops. Appium, and then go to our path variable, edit, and add Appium in here. Okay, accept. 
OK, OK. <clears throat> and now we should be able to open our terminal and type appium. And example, maybe I can give it a port. OK. Let's see if it starts. OK, looks like it's working. OK, and because um, Appium is using Node, uh, we get this pop-up right now when the security phone that uh, Node is trying to do some stuff. So we're just going to allow access <coughs> for Node. And we're ready to use Appium. So the server is started, and it's listening on this address. So now you know how to install Appium and how to start it by terminal. Okay, pretty simple. So if you want to know how to do automation on Android, make sure to check out my next video where I will show you how to create um, Android driver with, uh, with Appium in Java. <clears throat> so thank you guys for watching and take care.